if you guys have been uh, following along with the channel. Well, Trans Am back here was smoking really bad. We went through the motor. We found a hole in the piston. Oddly enough, that cylinder still had compression, just as good as the rest of the cylinders. We changed that piston. We thought that's why I had blow by and was smoking. Um, put the car back together, it's still smoking. So um, I noticed some of the valve seals that we got kept popping off. Um, and when I asked Promax, the heads are from Promax, they're Promax 200cc, and um, they told us the seals to get. Well, they kept popping off. So I ordered straight from Promax this time and uh, put them on. Car did good. It still smoked a little when you first started it, but driving it around it didn't smoke. But then it started smoking worse and worse. So those valve seals popped off too. <coughs> I found out that the seal that they ordered was the 562 or 565.562, which is the end side of the diameter that, that goes on the guide. You think they know what guides come on their heads. <coughs> We've had these for about five years. Maybe they changed their guide sizes down the road or something, but I measured these and they're 530. So we ordered the correct guide for them or seal uh, for the guide. And uh, I put those on there. I just got it finished. And, uh, and uh, Chris got some uh, Hoosier CO7s. Those are pretty sticky, man. Just fill them with your finger. They're they're sticky. Now these over here, the ones we took off of it, you can't get a bite on those. They're slick as can be. Those are the M and H Race Master 28 by 10s. And these are the DO6s that I'm all, I was going to put on my car. They're sticky. Not like this. Not them M and H's. They're awful. Look at that. There's some bite there. There's nothing there. Look at that. It'll, if I do that same pressure, you can't close your hand. It won't slide on them, on those. So hopefully that'll help us with no prep. Plus we're pulling timing. We might, yeah, we're going to pull timing on the launch. I learned how to do that in the 6AL ignition box over there. 6AL programmable. But hopefully now with these tires, We'll be able to do better at no prep. But tonight, I'm going to go to Octane Nights and um, see if I can't get it to run a 5 again. And actually, on these valve covers, I don't know if you guys have been watching or not, we was having problems with the valve covers hitting. In those valve covers, they use a stud that screws down in the head. Well, this time... I tightened them studs up really good. Before we was just finger tightening them. That might have been the problem right there. But I tightened them up really good. Put the valve covers on. Now they're not hitting. So all that should be good. Even though we got better valve covers coming. I think the problem, <laughs> I think the problem we had is we wasn't tightening them studs all the way up. We were just finger tightening them as tight as we could. I, I grabbed them with a pair of vice grips where there's no threads and tighten them and they're not hitting so yeah valve covers ain't hitting and we ain't getting no oil in our cylinders no more so it should run good now better than it has been running i think i run a 615 at 117 last time out but that was just with a 155 60 foot i was very lenient on the launch we're going to turn the launch up and see if we can't get this thing back in the fives um, Chris ran a 595 at 118 with it before and then he ran a 601 <coughs> at 118 with it before and that was just on 12 pounds of boost. Hopefully when we turn the boost up it'll even go faster. Hopefully 5355 five, five. but I mean there is a possibility that we could turn the boost up. It might not even go any faster. I've heard of that happening before but uh, we'll see. But we do need to get an <laughs> I uh, intercooler at least an air to air because look that's where the uh, blow off valve is right here is you know one of the branches you know that separate it you know to hold it together so <laughs> that air that's coming out of that blow off valve when you let off the gas look it's burning a hole in the hood so probably gonna need to get an air cooler for that 
or move that somewhere else. I don't know. I think Chris is going to get an inner cooler for it. But I, I need to get an air pressure gauge because I dropped mine and I broke it. And uh, probably put those. Those are the stiff wall out here. They like a little bit more pressure. We'll start it off at like 14 PSI. We'll go to the track tonight and we'll see what it does. All right, setting up the tune for the Trans Am. We're going to do 3600 RPM launch. Um, that's operated off the trans brake button. When you hit the trans brake button, that's as high as it'll go. It'll hit the two step at 3600. And it's locked out at 34 degrees, and we're pulling 0.7 degrees per pound of boost. So at 10 pounds of boost, it'd pull 7 degrees, which would be 34 minus 7, be 27 degrees. 20 pounds of boost, it's going to pull 14 degrees of timing, 34 minus 14, be 20, etc. Change of plans, it was already at 3,500. We're going to change it to 3,800. Try that, 3,800 RPM launch. All right, well, that's doing that. We're going to set this up. Oh, wrong button. Launch PSI. We're going to put that at 8. 8 dome, which is probably about 12 pounds of boost. One stage. And we're going to go, yeah, 12 pounds with 25 rate. So we're only really the thing that we're changing from that 6.15 pass is a little bit more dome on the... Um, on the trans brake on the launch and more RPM on the launch. Try to get that 1360. And we'll put the scramble to force 15 at a rate of 25. Rates just how fast the boost comes in. One is slow, 50 is really fast. It actually says for CO2 or onboard air to do um, 1 through 15 and then use some boost pressure. You'd set it 25 to 50, but I don't know, it seems to rate in better at 25. So yeah, that's what we're gonna start with. All right, here we are, Kentucky Dragway. Huh? Not much y'all can see or not, but Willis always thinks I'm talking to him. I'm gonna do a video. <laughs> but a 3,800 RPM launch, eight pounds on the gate. That might be a little too spicy. I'm a little nervous, ain't gonna lie, but we'll see. Stupid me forgot to put air on in the onboard air, so it was just on um, a wastegate spring pressure, which would only be about four pounds of boost. So it runs 677 at 105, which is about right for what it usually runs, just on four pounds of boost uh, wastegate spring pressure. Well, guys, I'm as about as stupid as they come because it did cut out and I do think the jets need lowered. I went and got my jets and stuff to change them with, but I'm, I'm stupid. I didn't put no air in the onboard air. It was running on gate pressure. So I'm an idiot and that was only on gate pressure, which is only about four pounds of boost.
right about on the one two shift. It cut out just a little on the one two shift. It did that on the last pass too. And I'm not sure why, because the last time I ran this car nothing had changed besides changing the valve seals. It it didn't do that and it ran the six fifteen, but this time it was cutting out right before the shifts and this time on the one two shift it starts smoking. You can't hardly see it in the video, but it was. <laughs> Right there, it uh, it let go, and I was hoping it was just a head gasket, but you'll see here we dig a little deeper, and uh, unfortunately, it looks like it hurt a piston. It looks like it leaned out and hurt a piston. Well, we're getting towed back. Look at that! Look at that smoke in that field over there. That's ours. That's ours. <laughs> That's mine. What do you think about that? So I'm thinking the issue started when we was on the trans brake because it only 159 60 foot and what we had it set on it should have at least 140 maybe even 130 but I uh, took two straps off two of the plugs and took the porcelain completely out of another and still run a 646 at 110 and a 1014 at 120 on the brakes. So we refreshed this motor last winter and we found a hole in the piston even though that cylinder had good compression and the car still ran good just had more blow by than it should so I took the number two spark plug out hoping it had a blowed head gasket to see if when we turned it over if water would squirt out but looking at the level of the radiator here after the car cooled down it's full of water it's a little rusty but that's common when you run just straight water but um yeah based on that we didn't we didn't see anything that would imply that that cylinder that I thought would ever blow a head gasket would be right there because the head was nicked a little. It just wasn't nicked far enough to get into the gasket area. But looking at the gauges, it, it did get hot after going down through there, but if it if it leans out, uh, it is gonna get hot. Um, but it got up to about 230, and this car usually stays around 180. So we took the number two plug out, no water squirted out, but it was wet down inside there. But uh, I was hoping water would shoot out of the cylinder and tell us we had a blowed head gasket. So we take the number four spark plug out and the porcelain's missing, the strap's gone. And the number one cylinder, the strap was gone and the rest of the plugs were fine. But this tells us it's deeper. Well, unfortunately, the radiator's full. The number four, the number four spark plug is tore all to pieces. So it's hurt deeper inside the motor, unfortunately. But we'll get her fixed. Yeah, getting towed home. Okay, that must be dirty. I, I think I get oil on my camera lens. But yeah, we're getting towed home. When we get back to the house, we'll put a borer scope on it. And, uh, see what, uh, see what the damage is. Well, we had the issue on the number one cylinder, too. We got this spark plug, too. It's not as bad as the other one, but it's pretty bad. It's a one and four. We took the valve cover off that side. Didn't drop a valve or nothing. All the springs and valves and everything are still in there. I mean, look, unless it moves. So my consensus is, guys, I think when it hits a certain RPM, it just leans out. Because once you, it's right at when you shift. And I think we got the shift set at 66, something like that. I don't know. But um, I think, like, right as you hit about 60, because it starts cutting out before you shift it. And the wideband reads good up to that point. Um. I think it happens so fast you can't even see it on the wide band. But I think once it hits 6,500, somewhere in there, it starts leaning out really bad. And we're not running the vent tubes. We were, I mean, when we ran the, we ran the vent tubes before, and then, and it worked fine. We rebuilt the motor, and ever since then, if you put the vent tubes on there, it's just way too fat. 
So we took the vent tubes off and the AFR was good, but I think when it hits a certain RPM, it just flat out leans out. It, when you're going down the strip and you go, it's right before the shift light comes on, it starts cutting out and then you shift and then wah, and then bah, 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 and then you shift and wah. I think it's leaning out at hard RPM and just got the piston again, melted the piston. I don't know, man. Oh, I don't know. I think we're better off to go fuel injection on this thing. I'm tired of messing with that blow through carburetor. And um, here's an endoscope dialing in the number four cylinder. You can see the piston has a bunch of dents in it. I'm assuming from piston material because it's hard to get this endoscope just right. But if you look just right, um, here in a minute it'll show a bad spot in the edge of the piston. But um, I think right there, see? I think we're just going to LS swap this thing and put an aftermarket ECM on there. That way we have some fail safes and it's just easier to tune. Tune it. Changing jets and a carburetor at the track when the motor's hot um, kind of sucks. Um, but um, everything from this motor is for sale or for trade towards LS parts. I'll put uh, the parts we're going to sell in the description if you're interested. Just uh, message Marshall Tester on Facebook. I'm the only Marshall Tester that has pictures of these cars, so it's easy to find. But uh, y'all, thanks for watching and have a great day. Uh, we're not experts at this. The point of these videos is not to show y'all how to do stuff. It's just showing y'all that, you know, um, we're not trained to do this. We just do this through watching videos, reading, and just asking people questions. And uh, we're trying to do it like that. And any input or help y'all have is greatly appreciated. And um, I put everything in here, even the mistakes that we make. I mean, I could have just, you know, not made this video and said, we're going to LS swap this thing and put fuel injection on it and just left this out. But I wanted to show you all everything we do and we try and the mistakes we would make and et cetera, everything along our journey to try to, you know, do fast cars for not really, I don't know what the definition of fast is anymore, but to do cars like this as cheap as we can. But uh, again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.